Hoover Dam. All the way back at the turn of the 20th century, engineers believed that the Black Canyon and nearby Boulder Canyon had some serious potential to support a dam that could produce hydroelectric power, and the Colorado River was the ideal water source. It was the perfect storm for such a grand project, and in 1928, this proposal became a reality. By 1936, the Hoover Dam was completed in its entirety, an impressive two years ahead of schedule. Even though this description makes it sound like this was an easy accomplishment, this project remains one of the finest examples of American engineering. There are numerous interesting stories that surround the Hoover Dam, but perhaps the most interesting stories are related to construction workers. Even after 80 years, stubborn myths still cling to the colossal construction effort that built Hoover Dam. Despite what you may have heard, no workers are entombed in the concrete structure. The official death toll from industrial accidents during construction of the Hoover Dam is 96, but historians agree that the actual figure almost certainly is higher. Possibly the most shocking story that surrounds this power station begins with a man named John Gregory Tierney. He was born in 1885 in Piedmont, Missouri. John Gregory made his career as a hard rock miner. His work carried him to Idaho, then Arizona, and finally to a survey camp on the bank of the Colorado River in Boulder Canyon. This unfortunate man drowned on December 20th, 1922 while looking for an ideal spot for the dam. It took almost two weeks for news of his death to reach Las Vegas from the remote work site. Newspapers offered differing accounts of what happened, but the endings were the same. JG disappeared into the water and his body was never found. John Gregory's son, Patrick William Tierney, was 12 when he lost his father to the Colorado and his grief-stricken mother moved with him back to Missouri. They settled in the Springfield area, where Patrick went to high school and met his future wife. Not long after Patrick and his wife welcomed their son in 1931, the young family headed west in search of work in the deepening depression. The dam was the biggest construction project going, and Patrick may have thought he could parlay sympathy over his father's death into a job there. According to newspaper accounts, an electrician's helper fell 320 feet from one of the two intake towers on the Arizona side of the stream on December 20th, 1935. This was the last death on the project's official fatality list. What's shocking is that this electrician's helper was Patrick Tierney. His father's death was the first death caused by this massive construction project, and Patrick's death was the very last death before the dam started to work. This incredible story is still being told by tour guides to those who decide to visit this magnificent power plant. The Titanic 14 years prior to Titanic's maiden voyage, in 1898, author Morgan Robertson wrote and published a novel called The Wreck of the Titan. The story features the ocean liner named Titan, which sinks in the North Atlantic after striking an iceberg. The Titan was described as the largest craft afloat and the greatest of the works of men, equal to that of a first-class hotel, and, of course, unsinkable. From today's perspective, it seems like Robertson somehow predicted the rise and fall of Titanic. However, this historical coincidence is much more mysterious and intriguing than you can imagine. Although the novel was written before the Olympic-class Titanic had even been designed, there are some remarkable similarities between the fictional and real-life counterparts. Both ships were British-owned steel vessels both around 800 feet long and sank after hitting an iceberg in the North Atlantic in April, around midnight. Like the Titanic, 
The fictional ship sank in April in the North Atlantic, and there were not enough lifeboats for the passengers. There are also striking similarities between the size and life-saving equipment. The latest technology was used in the building of the Titan, including the addition of 19 watertight compartments. With nine compartments flooded, the ship would still float, and as no known incident of the sea could possibly fill this many, the steamship Titan was considered practically unsinkable. Because Titan was considered unsinkable, she only carried the minimum number of lifeboats required by law, 24, able to carry about 500 people. This was not enough for the 2,000 passengers on board. Morgan Robertson's Titan hit an iceberg in the North Atlantic Ocean and sank. 2,987 people died in the disaster. Morgan Robertson republished his novel after the sinking of the Titanic with some notable changes, suggesting that he was trying to cash in on the Titanic disaster. Nevertheless, the similarities between the Titan and Titanic are striking. Violet Jessup Occasionally, historical events are so anomalous that sometimes it seems impossible that they could be factual. Such is the case with Miss Violet Jessup, the 24-year-old stewardess who was working on Titanic's maiden voyage. Violet was born and raised in Argentina, and she was the oldest child of Irish immigrants. As a young child, she contracted tuberculosis and was given just a few months to live. Somehow, she managed to fight the disease and went on to live a long, healthy life. Upon moving to England, she became a stewardess on a ship. At first, she had a hard time finding a job. Employers believed that her youth and good looks would be a disadvantage to her. At that time, most women working as stewardesses were middle-aged. After being hired by the White Star Line, she began working on the line's Majestic, switching to the Olympic in 1910. It was just one year later when the trouble started. In 1911, the Olympic collided with the HMS Hawk, which, surprisingly enough, was a ship designed to sink other, older ships by ramming them. Even though the Olympic suffered massive damage, it didn't sink. Not long after, Violet accepted work on the famous Titanic. As you already know, the Titanic struck an iceberg and sunk, killing more than 1,500 people. The young stewardess escaped the disaster on lifeboat 16. Once again, Violet lived to sail another day. In the lead up to World War I, she decided to serve as a nurse on board the Titanic's sister ship, Britannic, which operated in the Aegean Sea. Given her track record, you can probably imagine what happened next. The Britannic ran into a mine that had been planted by a German U-boat. The ship sustained substantial damage and quickly started to sink. This time, Violet wasn't lucky enough to jump into a lifeboat. Instead, she jumped overboard. She later joked that she only survived because of her thick hair, which cushioned the blow. Having survived three accidents and being a victim of a series of strange coincidences, Violet decided to take a break from being a ship stewardess. However, she soon went back to work working on Royal Mail ships until she retired at the age of 61. She died in 1971 at the age of 84. The Erdington Murders Erdington is a quaint suburb of Birmingham, England that dates back to the 9th century. The old English community has undoubtedly seen its share of historical events that are still remembered by the locals. However, there is a dark chapter in the community's history that continues to haunt its residents. The unsolved murders of two young women with details too similar to ignore right down to the date of their grisly deaths. The creepier part is that these two incidents happened 157 years apart. 
At 6.30 a.m. on May 27, 1817, a laborer named George Jackson came across a bundle of clothing, a hat, and shoes near a water-filled pit. He alerted locals who found the body of Mary Ashford with bruising on her arms, presumably raped before her death. The prime suspect was a man named Abraham Ashford, who was romantically involved with Mary. However, Abraham claimed his innocence. Despite this, his trial began on August 8th, and public opinion was convinced of his guilt. Nevertheless, three witnesses were able to corroborate Abraham's alibi. This, in conjunction with a lack of concrete evidence, led the jury to deliver a not guilty verdict. The unsolved murder of Mary Ashford left a deep wound on the Erdington community. Exactly 157 years later, that wound would be reopened in a painfully similar case. On May 27, 1974, another 20-year-old woman was murdered and left in a ditch near Chester Road in Erdington, in the exact same spot where Mary Ashford was found. A young woman's body, which showed signs of rape and strangulation, was discovered a few days after death. This woman was identified as Barbara Forrest, and reports state that Barbara was with her boyfriend, Simon Belcher, on the evening of her death, dancing at several bars. Belcher said he walked her to the bus at 1 a.m., and that was the last time he saw her. A manhunt ensued, involving over a hundred detectives, and once again, authorities zeroed in on a suspect named Michael Ian Thornton. The suspect was put on trial. However, the man was found not guilty due to a lack of evidence. Both murders remain unsolved to this day. Some view the parallels between the cases as mere coincidence, while others see them as signs of something sinister. One thing is for certain, the people of Erdington continue to search for answers to these strangely similar cases. Deus Ex. For those who don't know, Deus Ex is a game series that blends RPG and FPS genres in a science fiction setting. It's often considered one of the greatest PC game series of all time, having garnered Game of the Year awards on several occasions. There are numerous myths that surround this game, but perhaps the most intriguing one is connected to the World Trade Center and the terrorist attacks that happened on September 11, 2001. The original Deus Ex game was released in 2000. While playing the original Deus Ex, you'll be set on several missions throughout Liberty City. And here, if you check out New York City in the background, you'll notice something rather conspicuous. The World Trade Center towers are missing. The official explanation given in the game is that the towers were taken out by a terrorist attack. A mere year later, the Twin Towers were indeed destroyed by terrorists in the infamous 9-11 tragedy. People quickly pointed to Deus Ex, thus predicting the future, and began wondering how much more it would accurately predict. The true reason you cannot find the Twin Towers in the game is merely due to the engine's limitation at the time. The developer simply could not fit the towers in, as they were forced to crop the skyline in order to fit within these limitations. Those still claiming that it had to have simply predicted this attack may have also forgotten that the World Trade Center was a target even before 9-11. Back in 1993, for instance, there was an attack in which terrorists parked a rental van in a garage underneath the towers and lit the fuses on a massive bomb. This attack could have easily inspired the idea the World Trade Center would eventually be destroyed by a terrorist organization, as the game itself explains. I'm sure we can all agree that this is a very strange and even ominous coincidence. Deus Ex's developers wanted to create a fictional story, but in the end, it happened for real.
The September 11th attacks killed 2,996 people and injured over 6,000 others.